This is The Current Buzz, a podcast powered by Oklahoma Electric Cooperative and OEC Fiber, dedicated to teaching you what makes us different. Welcome to another episode of The Current Buzz. Kayla and I are here today with Tim Faree, who is our key accounts specialist. Welcome to the show, Tim. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you having me on. So as, I think this is your first time on the podcast, correct? Uh, I've done some episodes in the past on um, storm, storm related stuff for commercial accounts, storm preparedness. Okay. So you're you're not a newbie. You're you're a returning guest with all your with all your expertise. And as our before we get started in today's topic, as our key accounts specialist, you really serve, as your title says, uh, our key accounts. Talk to us a little bit about what your job entails and what services you offer to our members and subscribers. So w- the most important thing about being the key accounts specialist is really I'm kind of the that main point of contact and <clears throat> the best way to explain it is i am the middleman so I, i'm here to make sure the co-op is is uh, recovering everything we need to recover for our wholesale costs and making sure that the member is paying the lowest cost for their electricity so I'm just trying to help out both parties i love that um one of the things that we've seen huge growth in in recent years is the, the accounts you serve. And we define key accounts as a commercial account and someone who uses over a certain amount of energy, correct? Right. Okay. Um, well, then Kayla and I were talking before you hopped on, and today we are going to talk about crediting DG accounts or distributed generation, which essentially for us is typically either solar on your house or wind on your house. So first of all, Kayla confided to me that she does not know very much about this topic. So I'm going to put her on the spot and say, uh, Kayla, what do you know about distributed generation? That is a great question, Autumn. And I'm really glad that you asked. I know little to nothing um, other than what you so graciously (laughs) shared with me before we started. So very glad that you're here, Tim. Um, I do know that we have had, like Autumn said, a spike in people who have been interested in this. I think every um, every summer we have a lot of talk about solar. I think we've got a couple of podcasts that talk about um, solar and different things that are kind of fluxing in the industry. So, Tim, I'm just going to throw it over to you to educate me and our listeners on DG credits and how all of that works. All right. So, <clears throat> and, and, you know, like you said, we covered a lot of this in some of our other podcasts, but I believe there's some some things we can go over that that uh members need to ask before they just believe a salesman that come up. Uh, you know, one thing when a salesman does come to your house, uh, it's good to do your due diligence, treat it just like you would, you know, you're shopping for a house or shopping for a car. You're not going to believe just one person. You're going to reach out to multiple sources and find out, you know, what's going on. Shop around, shop uh, <clears throat> their uh, finance options as well. And then, you know, contact your uh, electric co-op. There are a lot of things that we can do. We don't install solar. We're not going to uh, suggest a an installer for you, but there's a lot of things we can help out with just by visiting our website, okcoop.org. Uh, and we have several employees, and not including myself, that are uh, solar experts that can really dive deep with this and, and uh, help simplify a few things for whatever questions you may have. Well, and really, the idea for this podcast, as Tim so perfectly said, we have seen, to Kayla's point, as we have seen more people installing solar on their homes, we have seen also an increase in what we call solar scams. So people who are being, to your point, Tim, kind of sold a bill of goods where they're either uh, partnering with the wrong solar company or overbuilding the solar on their house. So when, when we say overbuilding, we want you to have enough solar capacity to offset your energy consumption, but not so much solar capacity that you're making such a large upfront investment that you can never really recuperate on the back end. So one of the things we've seen lately is kind of a misunderstanding about when we tell you, uh, I guess, 
a misunderstanding. And if I overproduce, so if I have solar on my house and I overproduce energy, how the co-op credits that back. Can you talk to us a little bit about that, Tim? All right. So one thing that we do is called net metering. And this net metering is basically allows your meter to run forward or backwards. So if you are consuming power from OEC, then your meter is running forward. And if you have, uh, say, solar panels on your house and they're generating during the day and <clears throat> you are basically providing power to the co-op or, or offsetting your usage from your meter, so our meter would spin backwards. So basically, it's that's net metering. Uh, some of the frequently asked questions we get with that is, you know, how much we pay and uh, why don't numbers match up? And so we do pay an avoided cost, which is calculated on a monthly basis from Western Farmers. And that is a Western Farmers avoided cost that, like I said, changes monthly. It does not match the rate that you're on. So just because you're on a rate and you pay so much per uh, kilowatt hour doesn't mean that that's the price you're going to get paid if you over generate one month. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing also, that I think is really complex in this, and I'm sorry to interrupt, oh, go but ahead. that that uh, avoided cost changes monthly, correct? Right. Right. So um, Western Farmers calculates that each month, basically going off the cost of fuel, that their avoided cost from having to generate that power and put it onto the grid. So instead of them putting it onto the grid, the member actually generated that power from their solar or their di distributed generation and put that onto the grid. One of the things that I think we also sometimes understand when or misunderstand when we talk about net meeting, net metering or distributed generation is simply because we are not running power to an individual's home does not mean that we don't have kind of what, what, what we'd call uh, expenses on that, right? So we still had to pay for the meter, we've still had to run the poles, we still have to run the wire, all of that. What the member really is paying us for in that scenario is our reliability and that backup, right? If the sun's not shining, they still have access to all of our power. If the wind's not blowing, they still have access to all of our power. So it's it really is, when a member gets to that level of sophistication behind the meter, it really is a partnership between OEC right. and the, the end consumer. No, no, that's exactly it. Uh, so we are big supporters of building solar. We're definitely not against it. And we will purchase energy from Western Farmers. We'll purchase energy from the member. Uh, it's just the big thing not to get oversold by the salesman is thinking that you're going to overgenerate and uh, make a lot of money off of it because that's not the deal. Uh, basically, the way our program is, is structured is, it's, it, like you said earlier, it's to incentivize the build renewable system that offsets your needs. Uh, the current rate structure doesn't incentivize overproducing uh, a member's needs and instead is treated like any other uh, producer into the into the market. And I think that's, a, that's very well said. Something I kind of want to underscore is we treat that like any other producer into the market, right? So really looking at this as a partnership and absolutely we, we support solar. We have both the, our solar garden off of I-35 as well as the solar farm here in Norman through a partnership with Norman Public Schools. Incredibly good energy. We've learned a lot. One of the things we try at OEC and OEC Fiber to do is always be a, just a step ahead so we can make sure that we're educating our members so that we really understand what they're consuming and, and how all of that works. So um, again, really focusing on that that partnership. Kayla, what questions do you have on this topic? Well, um, as I'm sitting here listening to you guys talk, I think this is really helping me kind of connect all of the dots from our previous podcasts and, and kind of what people might think about solar. So I know um, we were talking about solar scams or salesmen who maybe are really eager to get our solar business as members out in the community um, and have, have solar panels installed onto our homes. Uh, oftentimes we're recording this in November, so we're coming off of the summer months. Uh, I know we've talked a lot about how those salesmen really like to hit the pavement and go house to house or start making those sales calls in the summer when demand is really, really high. And so we mentioned earlier overbuilding a solar uh, solar system, not to get too out of space with us, but um, build, overbuilding your solar for your home uh, and basing that off of peak demand. So when you build in the summertime, 
Um, obviously, that's when a lot of us see our highest electric bills, um, and that's going to really overproduce. And so I think this is really important for people to understand. And this is why we are here as a resource for people to reach out. So if you're getting um, hit up about solar, if you're interested about solar, like Tim said, give us a call, reach out to our reach out to us on our website. We are happy to walk you through what all of this might mean for your home and your specific application. Um, and I think it's just really important for people to know that we pay just like we would um, Western farmers and how we pay them for that energy coming back into our system. So reach out to us. We're here as resources. I know all of this as I'm sitting here learning myself, this is complicated and it, and it can really fluctuate throughout the year. So um, don't hesitate to reach out to us and use us as a resource as you're learning more. Tim, very well said, Kayla. Tim, what kind of imparting, what are we missing? What do you wish more members knew about net metering? Uh, so one thing really about net metering is one thing to remember is you don't build up your your generation. So if one month, if you over generate uh, 500 kilowatt hours and, and when that billing cycle is over with, next month, you don't have a, a 500 kilowatt hour credit. It, it resets every month. Uh, you can't you know split that up amongst different accounts. It is for what that generation is for. So if it's generating for your home or for your shop, that's the only thing that that uh, generation is going to. You can't split it up amongst the family. Uh, <clears throat> and then another thing uh, that's really important that we you know get quite often is the solar company will install a meter at your property that is different than our meter. And you'll re they'll probably have an app or a website or something that you can use. And there's a lot of great information on there. And sometimes people get confused by the information that's provided because it will say they've generated so much uh, power during you know the same time frame as their billing cycle. And our bill will be broken out that will say consumption, generation, and net. Well, there's a difference there. Uh, your solar system is looking at your generation for everything. The meter can't see that. Our, our OEC's meter cannot see the generation on the solar side. We only see the power coming to us. So the generation you see on your bill is just a mathematical difference of energy consumed and energy generated onto our system. So those numbers aren't going to, they're not going to match. Uh, and I, that causes a lot of confusion. Uh, so th there's a difference there. Honestly, that's incredible insight and something I never would have would have thought of, right? I mean, very, very well said. Um, okay, well, unless you have anything else to add, thank you so much for joining us, Tim. No, it was my pleasure. Remember, informed decisions lead to a brighter, more sustainable future. You can find us at okcoop.org and oecfiber.com. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.